an end that you start with. What is each of your processes, Ronya, if you would like to start? So, um, sometimes it's, it's one, one line or some words or something I read, something I heard, something I thought. And, but I, there are also many quotes in the, in, the, in the poem. So, like little, little things I, I just read in, in an archaeology book or whatever, or I heard, or it was like, like one line one woman said to me who uh, survived uh, the Yazidi the massacres in the Yazidi, she said, I always thought that end is when the sky is falling on the ground, but in this day the sky didn't fall, but it was the end, like some little things, and I, I heard and I remember, and so this, it could come from everywhere, but it's like, do you have a book of things you collect and keep? Yeah, and, and, and I have a document. For each poem, I have one document, and I collect and collect and collect, and then I need to rewrite and rewrite. And do, you, do you write by no, hand? No, no, no. Type? Yeah, I write on my phone, right. and I really not, uh, as people think it's... I, I sit in the public library and write poems, <laughs> like, like I would do my uh, master thesis. <laughs> Next to me, there are the people who are st um, study at university, or they they um, they they are learning for their um, exams and whatever. And I'm sitting there, and yeah. Ramya, what about you? What's your process? Um, inspiration is essential, of course, goes without saying. But I'm finding more and more that uh, discipline plays a, plays a huge role in the writing process. You just have to sit down and write. Do you have an everyday, like a time set No, aside? that's the problem. <laughs> I'm not disciplined enough. But if you can be disciplined, I think um, uh, the creative process will start getting stronger and stronger. You can't say that I have no inspiration and just sit there and not write, I think. <laughs> but that's what we all do. <laughs> guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, terribly guilty. I am the most like I, discipline is not in my uh, vocabulary related to poetry, writing poetry. I, um, I depend on uh, words, endings, um, images that come to my mind and then uh, if there's a notebook around, I'll write in it. I generally keep one near my bed and in my handbag or I use the phone, the notes uh, to write. Um, but yes, I, I believe I should uh, try to write a little every day. So maybe that's like a late New Year's resolution. What about you? Actually, I'm your old follower. I'm writing on paper and my own pen. If I'm not, that pen is not in front of me. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> right. This is one. And actually, I'm not writing in computer at all. OK. Yeah, directly, because of... Uh, my process is uh, maybe different from others. I'm writing and rewriting also in one piece. So this is the process. If you just see the Tagore book, it's a full of art and full of corrections and replacement of a word. So it is actually in the, my process too, in fact. Because when I write it and rewrite and sometimes... But process, when it starts actually, uh, it is a pain. Usually I am taking the pain of full night Usually I'm writing in the morning, but of course, in daytime and sometimes I'm also writing that. But maximum cases, uh, my good poems actually, I thought, there's a full, full, uh, it's a, a birth of a baby, just like I don't have the experience, but I know the, how difficult it is. Full night torture to yourself and write a poem, it is really something, when you just read it, you thought it, you had not written it, someone has written it. Do, do most of you write at night? Or? Yeah, I write at night. night. But I'm terrible in the mornings because of work. You have work gets in the way. It's work that. and yeah, night like everyone's asleep and everything is quiet. So you kind of uh, <laughs> you too. You're also in the night. Okay. Um, okay, so this is so we live in the era of reality TV, binge watching Netflix. Um, TikTok and all of you know, the reels culture. Uh, so there's smaller attention spans on one end. There's mindless indulgence on the other. 
Where is poetry in this landscape? Where do you see poetry fitting in? When we're trying to attract new audience that's actually scrolling all day. Well, when you put it that way, I think poetry should come out the winner in this whole thing because it's shorter, tend to be shorter, takes less time to uh, read a poem, but I think uh, what's happened is something quite surprising, right? Uh, the novel form and also the, the book, the physical book, I think sales have gone up unexpectedly, especially after, during COVID and um, in sort of the, the heels of COVID. So I think we are in for surprises. So either if it's um, not just poetry and prose is also picking up, I think despite all the threats we can see or we imagine from social media, I think there is still a readership. People do read. And Gen Z is supposed to be very good readers, so we have hope. Yeah, I feel that uh, we shouldn't really freak out about this short attention spans uh, and all of that. But uh, there are poets who are very popular on social media as well, right? So uh, there are, there's a lot of criticism against uh, uh, poets like maybe Rupi Kaur and people saying that they are not really poets, it's all just about feel good and angry, angry anger and all of that, uh, which might be true sometimes. But I think in a way it is uh, keeping, keeping young people at least with the genre and uh, not taking it away completely. So, uh, as Ramya said, yeah, I think we should not see it as a threat, but try to adapt these new trends in a way that will keep people reading poetry. Do you see yourself doing TikToks of your poetry? Nope. <laughs> Too old for that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about it. Yeah, I, 